my god. We are live, everybody. And I forgot to put my webcam on. And I don't even have Unprofessional. I don't even have a thing for Manor. Jesus. <laughs> Where even is this? You gotta give me something. If I'm showing you pictures of myself, you gotta show me pictures of you, <laughs> Zombie Grub. Come on. It's fair, it's fair. Exactly. Mm -mm -mm. Here we are. There it is. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yes. yeah. And the magic of s overlays. Just the bottom. Not quite that. Nope. Nope, it's not. Oh. Fine. Fine. Hello, dog. Just, Hi. Uh, Hi. I'll just sub right now. That'll, that'll do it. That'll show him what's up. I used to have a subregion for Skype, and then apparently uh, my OBS decided not to, so that's fine. Okay. Ha ha. Well, that's almost perfect. So we'll go with that. All right, everybody. You saw the wonder of technology right there. Um, <clears throat> it's the Tin Korean Qualifiers number two. If you don't remember, we did have, I believe, a live, I want to say, as well as Byun making it out of the uh, other Ting Qualifier. Let's put us up on uh, Team Liquid as well. And yeah, I'm casting here not with Rifkin, but of course with the lovely Maynard. How you doing, Maynard? That's right. I'm doing great, man. Uh, really excited. We were talking a little bit off camera, and uh, I think it's a long time coming. It cost between you and me. Very excited, and actually just excited to be on base trade in general. I am a, uh, you know this, but maybe not everyone knows this. I am a a, a uh, what do you call it? A serial lurker of this channel. I'm always watching base trade, whether I chat or not. I'm always there. Yeah. So. It's yeah. being, a, being a fan of the channel, and it's nice to be on it. Feels good. I finally made it at Zombie Grub. You finally made did it. it. It doesn't get better than this in a casting career. Made it. Yeah. Made it. I'm uh, super excited to cast with you, actually. And yeah, we were talking about that beforehand. But also excited to cast a couple of neat Korean names. So we were giving the uh, bracket a little extra time because it was basically on the cusp of being canceled. And since people were starting to check in even in the last, like, two minutes, give an extra five. So the bracket final... Uh, should be coming in the next minute or so. And, of course, with the delay on stream, you guys will uh, have already, I guess, gotten access to it. So it's not a very large bracket still, but we're kind of used to that, to be honest, with the Korean qualifiers. Once upon a time, this is the, way, this is the only way a Korean bracket would look um, before, I guess, Kespa Jail was freed and all of that. And we've actually been quite blessed with larger brackets, but we'll make do. It's still a, a lot of really good names like Solar, Zest, Super creator and of course the guys that we have in the team house over in korea the base trade tv team house like kelazur cloudy and uh, uh actually i don't think time is signed up today but so they got two out of four two out of five because i guess scarlet is also mm -hmm. scarlet's got to be back there by now but <clears throat> let's give a quick go over if this is a good enough bracket let's see if there's anything to be changed here bum, 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 bum. One little thing. Uh, and uh, ah, so decisions to make, man. Decisions to make. You're the boss. You're in charge. I know, right? Actually, it's it's good looks good. Of course, the double elimination, it's not uh, all over if one of these guys loses. It was such a short bracket. It should be the case that these guys actually stick around, which is another, of course, typical problem of the Korean qualifiers. I know some of you are going to be watching GSL on the other stream, or the, the screen, which is totally fine. Like, go ahead and do that. I do have some Yeah, multi-twitch it even. Yeah, multi-twitch, exactly. Some of our favorites on Base TV actually playing, of course, Ryung, I would say. Uh, Stats is always a, a good guy, but Rung's definitely, I think, the uh, base trade TV, Lima League hero, base trade TV, like, yeah, you know, friend, like, whatever you want to call it. So, kind of hoping uh, he'll do well. That's, we'll see. And uh, I guess the other, of course, Byun. <laughs> I think, I actually don't think I have to say anything about Byun and the fact that he's been on the channel all the time, but he's already yeah. qualified, so he doesn't have to be in here. And uh, even if 
Ryong and stats can't play today, which they were checked. They were signed up, but of course weren't checked in. There is another wild card qualifier, I believe, if not two other ones. I forget what, how many we've done. So lots of chances still for the guys who missed today to still uh, sign uh, sign up and actually get through top two. Well, well, top one and then bottom one, of course. So top two from the bracket will advance today to join their brethren and uh, in the Ting uh, tournaments. So. Yeah, it's looking. Really, I, I had a cheeky, uh, a cheeky look at all the uh, players that have qualified so far. Some really good names. So the final of the Tang Open is going to be really sick. Yeah. Don't want to miss it for sure. Yeah. It's going to be really exciting, of course, because we uh, have already announced that we're doing it live. We just said in California. We don't quite have permission yet uh, to say exactly where, but we're still working on that, guys. So just stay tuned. Uh, I do believe that if you're in the area, you might be interested in coming, I suppose I should say. So just uh, keep mm -hmm. that in mind with the dates involved. It is going to be at the end of March. Those those dates won't move as they are pretty set in stone. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And since the bracket is final, we'll actually be looking for a game here. And again, since the bracket is kind of short, so of elimination, we'll probably be, you know, looking to cast a little, a few more games, uh, like, say, in the round of eight or something like that. Uh than usual but here we go let's see here look at the bracket man yeah keenan tails looks like it might be pretty cool that looks like a tvp right there yeah we got a tvp a tvz tvz with kelazor and sola that's some pretty good matches man PVZ. we're a little bit spoiled for choice which is amazing considering it's uh like 10 players yeah well that's the nice thing about korea is always was quality yeah. players of course not just like a couple diamond guys signing up um, looks like I actually I kind of want to go in with Kelzer Solar. Of course, Kelzer's in the team house in Korea right now, and we yeah. went in to sign up for the last Korean qualifier, but I guess something happened, so he checked, he signed up, but didn't check in. Uh, so I'll go ahead and message him right now. Uh, it's the new ladder map pool, by the way. Guys. Oh hell yeah! Oh, I didn't even remember that. That's sick. Yeah, so we have <laughs> been using the new ladder or trying to use the new ladder maps uh, in our other tournaments as well. Uh, before it even was live and it didn't quite work out because like some of the maps weren't even available on, on battle.net at the time but um yeah you guys have seen cactus valley and you've seen the dancing cactus it's oh, back oh god what was the other one we had in there i can't remember the other one we had in there but uh point is it's uh god the new map pool actually have you played any games yet uh not on the new map pool no i'm actually i i haven't played starcraft in a little while um i actually really love the last map pool and i'm not sure how i feel about the new one just looking at it on paper but i'm one of those guys i gotta get a feel for it. i need to get my hands I need to get hands on it see what it's like so i am really keen to get started on the, on the playing some starcraft yeah i so, tried yeah. a couple of uh, games yesterday and and how did they go all right so uh, which which one is that <laughs> super super small map um i don't think it's paladin it's Emerald, is it Mm. Uh, I can't remember what it, which one it is, but it's very, very small. We cast it for the Team Liquid contest, so I, I remember it. But I played on it, and I was like, oh, shit. It's a TVT. This map is super small. I looked around my base, and there's like a ton of cliffs, and I'm like, I'm going to get here, X-Reapered. And I, I knew it especially because the guy started talking to me, and he was like, Boxer's the coolest. Yeah. And I was like, you're talking to me. You're cheesing that's me, a, man. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest sign. That's like, that's RTS 101 for all you guys playing from home. If, if someone's talking to you in the early game, they are very likely proxying something. So, yeah. God. Yeah. God. Hot tips from uh, Zombie Grub Man. Uh, yeah. Maybe only Zombie Grub. I died. I, I do a build, you know, that's specifically to help me. Like, I don't I don't one racks expand because I'm going to die through actually every single time in TVT. I mm -hmm. just do, you know, one base and I still die because I'm, I'm hella bad. Well, man. Uh, small map, though. Don't feel too bad. You'll get them next time, Zombie Grub, I believe you. Super BS. I should just start through actually bringing them back. <laughs> um, yeah. So the map pool is updated on the brackets. You'll see that. I mean, Abyssal Reef, Paladio Terminal, Proxima Station. Maybe it's Proxima Station. It's proxy right in the flipping word. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually don't see it updated on the Korean ladder maps. So I thought Korea did get the patch along with us, right? I mean, it's Wednesday, so it should have. Uh, I did update the client. Yeah. Um, before logging in, so I'm pretty sure they're on 3.10. I think you can actually F10 options, and I think that the version of the game might be in there. Just checking. Well, if it is, it's not showing when you click Blizzard Maps and then a Ladder Maps. It's still showing the old map pool, which is going to be a little obnoxious. Hmm. Uh, Potentially problematic. 
Maybe. Well, I mean, I can check real quick to see if it's still available in the, you know, list of maps. It's just, it's a little more annoying to have to go look for the maps. Like Paladin Terminal, let's see here. Tis annoying. I'm going to have to add you to my Korean friends as well. Oh, yeah. It seems like something that's really long overdue for you and me to finally become Battle.net official. Yeah. Uh, did Dares post the maps? You know, I don't think he did. Hold on. Because Kelzer just whispered me with Whirlwind. <clears throat> I don't believe that's in the map pool anymore. No, unfortunately, it's not little bit awkward <clears throat> it is on the bracket so like when these guys signed up they should have uh, should have should have seen it that's that's on them did you uh see the alima league gaff with scarlet and kills actually <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't actually oh we played five games that. in a best of three man and none oh, of them were draws. Wow. oh actually i heard rifkin <laughs> bring that up i heard him bring it up in the chat and in, in the during the cast and i went what what does that even mean and then i forgot about it yeah. I should have looked it up. I should have looked it up. So that's that. Yeah, it, it tell was me a about it. A little bit on us, right? Like, so the Olympic has a rule where it's only five maps out of the map pool instead of all seven. So they get rid of like the ones that are the worst because back in the day when it was first created, like people were just were literally, legitimately not picking like even three maps. So we had to we just cut them and made it a little bit more interesting. Well, mm -hmm. Scarlet and Kelazur just start coincidentally starting on and playing on these maps. Um, I don't even know how they started because I think Alimbley had a had a start map chosen for them. But the the point is, like, they played two games, and then they were on a third game, and the third game Olivia is like that map isn't in the map pool, and then they we're like, oh shit! Like we had to pause and like tell them there wasn't it, and they were like only they were like six minutes into the game, and Scarlet was like definitely winning, and it kind of sucked that she had to restart it. But then yeah. I was like, wait, if this oh. is in the map pool, isn't that second game also not in the map pool? We had to ask, and Olivia was like confirmed, like it's not in the map pool. Like they have to start from game number one. <laughs> oh man, <That's> a... <laughs> a little bit awkward. Uh, I wish that was the first, and I also wish that was the last time that that happened. But uh, it'll happen again. It probably will, but it would have been really sucky if Kelizer had like, you know, coincidentally he was the guy in that situation, and then if he like I let them play today, and I was like, oh by the way, whoops a daisy, that's my bad. <laughs> it's not whirlwind available. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just uh. Thanks for letting us give. Thanks for giving us feedback in the chat, by the way, guys. Also, it's really cool to be able to talk to all of you base tradians from this angle instead of being in the text box where I normally am. It's very nice. It's good to see you all. I see familiar faces in there as well. And I have adjusted my sound slightly. I guess Zombie Grub's ahead of me there, but. You know what? She probably needs to lower me further because I can be... I'm a pretty loud guy. I'm trying to be pretty quiet right now, but I uh, I have been known from time to time to explode. So yeah, yeah. Good to just, consider. just putting that out there, dropping the mic a little bit. It's probably not, it's probably not for the worst. Uh, yeah, I raised myself by 10 and you lowered by, uh, by 10, so... It's probably for the best. Also, uh, I am not stoned. I'm actually just relaxed. That's, uh, <laughs> that's another, another one out there. Okay. I know I got the hair and... I'm always smiling, but that's not because I'm high. At least not on any on high on anything illegal. I'm high on StarCraft. It's, especially when the game start. I'm gonna get pretty uh, pretty excited when the game start. Like Zombie Grub already mentioned, the player the player signups isn't huge in number, but what lacks in quantity is there in quality. There are a ton of great players in there. Um, I cast the OSC finals with Zeph, which is a major tournament back in the day online. Uh, and Keen and Innovation actually made it uh, all the way to the Grand Final. No, Keen and Beyond, sorry, made it all the way to the Grand Final. And that was a six series, and Keen actually took several best of series off in a, uh, off Beyond during that tournament. So, nice. Keen strikes me as a guy that's very likely going to go deep in this tournament. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Zest is Zest. State of TVP <laughs> in question right now, but, you know, mm. Protoss is starting to fight back a little bit. I'm seeing it happen. Protosses, say. you know, they drop, they're, they're dropping proxies. Oh god, and they're they making are, the yes. Terran, they're making the Terran work really hard for their wins these days. I'll be grub, that's for sure. You'll know all about that. And we got the main man hero. What is he? Top two on the Korean ladder. One account and the other account. Top two account. That's uh, on, on the Korean ladder in GM right now. Hero's on fire. He's looking great. Solar SSL champion. 
recent splice pickup, incredible player, lots to say about him. Creator, he's looking really good. He's streaming again these days. Really cool to see Creator on Twitch. Yeah, it's a good good year actually to be a fan of watching first person streams. <laughs> yeah, since the release of Casper, I mean, one of the, you can't say too many good things about Casper going away. I mean, there there are some good things about Casper going away as far as like the players being free to do a lot of stuff and a lot of tournaments getting to get their greasy mitts on those wonderful Kesper players and have them in their in their brackets. But um, the uh, the other plus is that they can, they can be on Twitch. We can watch them. We can be fans. We can sub to them. I love being in Beyond's chat and just spamming thanks sub. Thank, thanks sub. For some, yeah. for some reason, that gives me pleasure just to watch like the, the, the champ himself ladder and also just shitpost in Twitch chat. Feels good, man. Yeah. Well, the... Um... I love watching Bjorn, right? Like when he was just a streaming monster like years ago. Like he wasn't super popular. In fact, he was probably like I guess on his way out. But his stream was amazing because he was amazing, and he was yeah. Uh, he for, was like, a fringe player back then. Plus hours, like Jesus. He's a. Uh... It's like well, yeah, he's he a monster. Was that he got addicted to it? Well, the reason he's the reason he's the champ is because of the sheer amount of StarCraft he's played versus everyone else. I could easily oh, say yeah. he's played the most. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. So, uh, some news, I suppose. Zest actually didn't end up showing up despite checking in, which really sucks. Oh, which is, Zest. It's very awkward, though, because it turns out that BKGG is Chinese in China, so he can't play either. <laughs> and they're, like, facing <laughs> each other, so it's just, like, nothing in the bracket right now, I guess. Uh, yeah, someone's going to get advanced right to the semifinals. So the winner's semifinals um, from that top bracket once they actually play. Uh, hmm. That's exactly what I was afraid of happening. That's, oh well. Oh no, Zest actually showed up. Yes. <gasps> nice. Okay. He was, uh, yeah, we hadn't actually delayed that thing by five minutes. He probably would have gotten the walk over time or technically, but then it wouldn't have mattered because BKGG. Uh, That's right. He's right. Chinese. He's, he's being, he's being cheeky. He didn't read the rules. Didn't yeah. read the rules. Yeah. He actually got, uh, you know, uh, Darius checked for the last, uh, qualifier and he also got taken out of that one too so that's that's kind of all on him to be honest <laughs> like we told them like mm. the chinese players unless you're living in korea have to play in the wild card qualifiers of which there are three i'm pretty sure only one has played so far and they're all pretty still well timed for korea um or well i guess the eastern eastern uh world <laughs> that was eloquent. eastern world yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah eloquently put there zombie grub well said thank you thank you uh, Killzer finally has the new maps, so... Oh, that's exciting. Add me on Bnet, by the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Skype you my my numbers. Oh, the deets. The deets. Oh, whoops. So you make that work. I'm gonna break it for a second here. There we go. And... <laughs> if Maynard is being quiet, my speakers are gonna blow out when he gets excited. Yeah, very likely. I'm actually, um... Uh, seriously considering getting some hardware and compression material to uh, gate my my input a little bit because I listen back to I'm one of those people like I don't know about you but I find it really difficult to rewatch my own casts oh sure I don't like list I don't like listening to myself but you know to improve you really need to and I yeah. learned that recently so I, be, I rewatched a bunch of my old casts online from home and I peak like my my microphone explodes and the gain is like too high or something like that mm -hmm. and it sounds okay when i'm talking like this but when i yell it sounds terrible and really need to fix that because yeah. as much as i try to keep the yelling to a minimal because i know a lot of people don't like it i try to keep it to a minimum but uh i'm gonna say guys i get lost in the moment sometimes in a fit of passion it just happens i know uh let's get you in here actually that would be great yeah i added you so Okay, I haven't got my I haven't got my thing in my I haven't got the thing. Uh, I guess just join the Beijing TV chat then. Add you from there. What is the so? It's just yeah. There's no secret. <laughs> there is no secrets. I'm here. Let's see if I have to join to this. Oh, that should be working. That's weird. Twitch alerts is not deciding to work right now. Maybe someone must have resubbed. Oh, we'll see. All right, there you are. Let's try adding you as a friend now. Zombie Grub inviting me as a friend. Of course you can be my friend, Zombie Grub. Get the get the hell in here and get into my friends list right now. Oh my god. It's special. Here we Ooh, go. Give me host. It's super special. All right, let's make a tweet. Let's see here. K 
taking off with at Kelly. It's probably three kills or something. No, but at Splice Solar. <clears throat> His teammate stats, I guess, is playing right now. Um, and Kelzer says he's ready whenever. So, are you ready to do this? Let's do this. I'm ready, dude. Let's do it. All right. Kicking in again. Honor Grounds is the map. Honor oh, Grounds. We are just about ready to go. I've not seen this map yet. Pretty keen. Uh, I have not played on it yet either. I don't think I've actually seen this map either. So, uh, two Sweet. of the maps were, um, you know, in the map tournament. So I was pretty used to those, but I don't remember this one. Hmm. 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 Oh, it's pretty. Look at that filter. Oh, oh, it's got a little bit of sepia going on. Okay, then. All right, well, let's do this. It is the beginning of the Tang Korean qualifiers. Number two, we already had two other Koreans uh, advance on into the actual tournament. So hopefully one of the guys here today will be the next. Of course, a little bit of bias for this guy in the bottom oh, left yeah. of Honor Grounds. He is the Red Terran, Kelazur. Playing for the Bay Street TV house. Yeah, he is. That's why we're so biased. That's right. And in the bottom right, from Splice, this is Solar. What a god. Handsome boy. Very good at English. Which, uh, which was a pleasant surprise when I met him at BlizzCon. Yes, yeah. He, uh, he has lived in America for a little, tiny little while, and uh, as well as just like... Apparently just, you know, he learned a lot from watching sitcoms, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, part of my family is from is from Europe, oh. and the uh, like my older uncles and that sort of thing from Europe are actually not very good at English, but their children are. Like they're they have insanely good English. Like they're very fluent, have basically American accents and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason because of it is because they watch a lot of cartoons which are subtitled, so yeah. they learned it from that. So similar for Solar Story, I suppose. Yeah, when I was in uh, Paris for Nation Wars, I was just talking to a lot of the, the French guys, and I was like complaining that there are so many channels that are dubbed. So, you know, <laughs> they'll, they, they won't just put subtitles on a movie. So I had to watch like Men in Black in like French dubs, and it was oh terrible. Oh my god. And I was like, guys, like, what is with this? Like, why do they do that? And they all were like, oh yeah, it's like a, it's a French and it's a German thing. Like, we'll both do it. And it's really, like, we think it's very annoying too, because when we try and learn English, um, like a lot of the other European countries have a step above us. Like they already have uh, an advantage mm. because they can listen to natural English speaking uh, when they watch American movies. But for us, like they always dub it. And I was like, that's interesting. I never considered that. Wow. But it makes sense. I also, know? yeah, it, ma it makes sense. And also uh, I think the French also have like, the, not all the French, obviously a lot of them are very sweet, especially the O gaming people. But there is definitely like a... Uh, I'm trying not to say anti-English um, <laughs> bias in France, but there kind of is. So a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very, they're a very proud people, and that's fine. Oh, like yeah. I actually respect that quite a lot. They should, they certainly are. Like I mean, as far as stereotypes of the French people like go, they're all true, but not the ones that were like they're really mean or really rude. At least it's not the oh, one no, I no, experienced. No. So no, yeah, they're, they'll, they're not actually horrible people. That's, yeah, yeah that's they'll eat their baguettes and they'll like their French and you know all these types of things. But it's all because they have a very deep like tradition and respect uh, of their culture. So I think it's yeah. actually super cool. But this is uh, really weird here. Of course, Honor Grounds might be new for some of these players as well who have been intently practicing for other tournaments on the old ladder map pool. Bam, suddenly they got to play in the new one. Um, mm. And I mean, it's new for us too. So, like, taking a quick look at it, we did have a pocket expansion, kind of like uh, yep. bridgehead back in the day. So there's no ramp this, between the two. This main and back natural looks so abusable. There is so much area on here to drop in the dark. Like, you need to spread your main out. It's such a huge main. I actually like having big mains, but it looks, especially like drop builds would be very strong on this map. There's a really short rush distance if you spawn in these locations as well. For a four-player map, it doesn't look that big. Yeah, actually, that's so. a really good point. And Kelzer did scout last, unfortunately, but the point is he eventually got here, and it's just the weirdest little map. Man, the Zelnog is right at He's at the third already. Third. <laughs> <laughs> this is so it's awkward. Like He's like, oh, hey, there's a hatchery right there. I got four Hellions, so I'll just wait for the drone transfer and then maybe set those on fire a little bit. Yeah, right? Um, wow. The yeah, Hellions are coming through here. Wow, up We're into the in. main. Okay. Um, Solar yeah, has a couple queens. of links, not too bad. 
Yeah, he hasn't lost too much just yet. Not taking any critical damage from these from these Hellions, but uh, I mean, Kelzo has killed a good handful of Lings. Nine Ling kills in this game so far. Uh, I think maybe eight in a drone, perhaps. But Solar is doing something that I kind of expect to see a little bit on this map, and that is Roach builds. This seems pretty good for Zerks to do. Yeah. High capacity fuel tanks being Whoa. researched by Kelazor. Why? Whoa. No way. Is that real? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, and an armory. Okay, well, this is an interesting combination. So. Yeah, this is looking some uh, some crazy mech hybrid going on down here for Kelazor, or possibly just Hellbat with some Sky Terran. That is. Mm. So weird. Why do Metavax though? I like he's repairing his Hellions. Of course, we see that going down. But this is a very odd build indeed. It's actually not the uh, the worst upgrade to have. It really does improve the efficiency of a of a Metavac. But it's mm -hmm. it's it's usually not worth it. Um, even if it does like greatly increase the boosts. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. I mean, cool. I'm glad that he's getting it because I, I honestly just haven't seen this upgrade in a professional level game, and this is a professional level game. Make no mistake. These yeah. uh, these are pro gamers. Uh, seeing a bit more aggression here at the third base of Solar. It's held that time. Morphe going down for Kelazor. He doesn't have medevacs for support, but he is going to start busting away on these queens. Doesn't have a hugest uh, queen count, and there's definitely not that. I mean, there are some links now, but with this position between the Evo Chamber and the third, I feel like. Kellers was Hellbats are just going to be able to handle anything until those roaches come out. Yeah. And even then, he needs a lot more than that. We have a Hellions or Hellbats being dropped as well oh. with a couple of Hellions. And actually, Solar is just going <laughs> to tap out. What? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> uh, the, the, on the grounds is making me chuckle right now. I'm getting used to this map. And uh, my first my first ever game on, 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 on the grounds, just saw it then, guys. It was my first ever experience with this map. I think along with yours as well, Zombie Grub, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah. um, man, I think that one's going to be vetoed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> I feel uh, like it. <laughs> that, was, that was crazy. I mean, that uh, that all came to a close really unexpectedly because, well, okay, so someone didn't have any units. That makes sense. But he did have a Roach Warren, and that's like step number one against dealing with Hellbats. But it didn't, it didn't matter. Um that was a super weird build on a super weird map, and Solar clearly didn't get the scouting that he needed to, even though I would say uh, there's probably a lot of chances to get Overlord scouting. There's so much dead space. There's, I don't know yeah. if you can actually catch all the Overlords before they get to... Well, I guess if there's it so just... much dead space. <laughs> as long as you actually scout the Overlord coming in, then hopefully you can hide what you're, you're building. I actually, if that map if that map map doesn't get vetoed, I'm so excited to see what the pros come up with to abuse the hell out of it and all the creative stuff that we're going to see in the future. Because, I mean, good God, the Zelnaga Watchtower literally covers the third base location, I, I and really you can wanted... see any army that comes down to defend it. You can see it. You can just leave. <laughs> um, there's like. So many things that you can do and, and abuse with the, with the way that the map's laid out. I mean, it's a four-player map, but the rush distance looks like it's short, like way shorter than Newkirk Precinct or something like that. Like, it's oh yeah, just a two-player map, so... I wanted to check if that was even really the third, like, maybe Solar made a mistake, but it, it, it was. Possibly. Like, there's no way to the north um, where Kelser was dropping, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, I didn't look close awkward. enough, to be honest. I wish I did. Yeah, it was, it's, I'll it's take a super awkward it. map. It's uh, it's either going to be vetoed a lot, or it's going to be like you know made into default cross, which is, even then doesn't look like a very big map. Um, so that's it, interesting. It seems a lot more sensible. Like I'm looking at the the playback on on uh, your channel right now, and I definitely think if it was first force crossed, it would be a lot more sensible. Uh, okay. It looks a little bit like uh, oh god, it was a frost map a long time ago. Long, long time ago. They have a similar rush distance. Frost map. Not quite enough information. Can't can't help you there. Mm. No, it had a destruct it had destructible bro rocks to get into the main. And it had a like gold bases in the middle of it. To get into the main gold bases. Oh, new planet S. Mm, no, I think it was no, newer than okay. newer than that, but not quite new planet uh, S. Okay. Then I mm. don't quite yeah, remember. It, 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 you know oh, it's what? okay. Chat might have her back. The next one's going to be Belcher That's... Vestige, which is a little more recognizable. <laughs> a little this map I know. Too. Yeah, right? Yes. Uh, very odd games here, I guess, with the new map pool. But <laughs> so, we'll see how the players use it. I did not realize. This must have been bothering a lot of people. That's the Tink Facts or a little malplaced. Misplaced. There we go. All right, so in the bottom right, 
as the blue Terran. He is Kelazor. Well spotted indeed. And it's up left, currently down in the series, getting um, getting hellbatted, roasted pretty hard there. That was Splice's Solar, and he's a uh, he's a lot better than that. I'm sure he's getting used to the, getting used to the new map pool as well. Um, so definitely expecting a lot more out of Solar here. Would not be surprised to see a tied series. Belshi Vestige is a map where Zergs have had plenty of success in the past. Um, so. Pretty keen to see it all go down. Did Apotheosis end up being in the new in the map pool? No, it didn't. No, okay. it didn't. People complained. Way People too complained. Much. Yes, they did. Oh boy. And I thought the complaints were valid. Like Apotheosis wasn't the worst map ever. Like I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna like you know cry for it. But it wasn't the funnest either, to be honest. Like some matches were amazing, but other matches were just like, okay, it's long. All right, just, like no no rush. Okay, it's over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Belshire Vestige is a little more of a... It, it's a... I suppose I'm... <laughs> it has certain elements to it that I think were very obnoxious back when it was in the map pool last time. But I think overall it's a it's a cleaner map, certainly. Actually, I was talking to Kelazir. I, I messaged him and I said, nice map, you know, the little pooey mode <laughs> for the on grounds <laughs> battle. And he uh, Oh, you laughed. cheeky, cheeky girl. I know. Yeah. And he said that it wasn't just the actual design of the map. It was also the tile set of the map he found was very obnoxious and way too cluttered. So there was like, apparently there was like bushes that were like covering his, uh, his view as well as just the actual tiles made it hard to see where, I guess... Uh, the units were going or like tiny little lings would go and I was like okay that's actually interesting because that is something that unless you test the map you forget to kind of check for like what do yeah, units like can they hide very well is it too hard to see like when the blue flame is, is in power like that type of stuff and um, I do remember us being that being a problem with some other maps in the past but it, we'd really hoped and I mean I, I don't know if you've heard us complain about the map selection for this season but you know that the reason that we had a team like a map contest is not just to be like this is a good design map but also you know the bugs that are supposed to be fixed and i would consider tile sets being a strain on the eyes to be kind of a bug and that that should not be in the map pool so. i'm not sure how map uh creation goes down i've never tried it myself i know there's some really good map creators out there uh can you just basically click a different tile set and replace all everything you've built with something else? Is it as simple as a click like that? Uh, just a I'm single click? I'm not sure it's that simple, but I feel like the actual... It, it, I feel like it's not too far off, but again, I don't remember. Like, I fiddled with the Warcraft 3 map design, you know, <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, I, I used to make maps in Brood War um, for ah, fun when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, Family Starcraft 2 editor is much more powerful, but also a lot more complicated, so not yeah, too sure. Yeah, I, I gave it a little bit back in like 2010, and I'm like, hmm, I'd rather just play the game. So we're seeing a, a nice speedling opening here from Solar, getting to kill that Reaper, which is a nice opening for the Zerg. You always feel pretty good about that. Um, and Kelazor is reactoring, and it looks like a, a different opening here from the last game. He's going to go bio heavy here and switch over into, I guess, a regular 2-1-1 sort of follow-up. So... Doesn't look like a Hellbat is on the way here. It's just going to be straight up Bio Stim and then probably peppering in some Widow Mines, playing a more of a quote unquote legit TBZ. Yep. Yeah, this is definitely a more usual build. For Solar, Ooh. this is becoming Spire. a usual build. Yeah, two base Spire. Splice Solar Spire. Iterations of the Spy classic. Solar Sire. Yeah. The Splice uh, Spire. Yeah, exactly. So. It used to be like, you know, Heart of the Swarm. This is actually a very legitimate build. And a lot of people were going for just defaults. Like I said, the Void, it really died off. Muta's died off. You know, there's months where it's just Road mm, Ravager. And now the Koreans are their first ones to bring back Needling Bling. And they're also some of the first ones to really adopt going for two base fire. I still think Bly was the first to actually do it. Back, uh, bring it back rather in Legacy of the Void. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, it's <laughs> it's it's a, around in the meta now. And it's something that Kelzer will have to consider as a potential, his Reaper didn't really get a scout to cons like to tell him that though. Like he's very blind. Yeah, he hasn't. I mean, losing that Reaper obviously uh, hinders your your early game vision quite a bit. And he's going to go for a drop here. Solar did see the Medivacs before the Overlord died there, so he's obviously pretty aware of them. And because he's prop, he's powering pretty hard for this Spire tech. He doesn't actually have a ton of units. Kelazor was actually double. Well, he was double army supply. A bunch of muters being made now for Solar, but uh, eight muters 
Yeah. Hmm. These Marines do have stim. They do have meta back support, and this is going to be tough to spot to stop without a, a good number of queens and lings. That is absolutely true. He does have, I think, enough lings, and the muted, as I long think as so. they're careful, d diving in and out can add a little bit extra damage. And of course, the real kicker for Solar, the real ideal of this build, is to get in a lift up, and then of course uh, chase with the mutas, and that would be absolutely perfect. yeah, for sure. As long as he doesn't lose those mutas here, and it looks like Kelzor is forced to lift up and find a better position for his for his marines. Unfortunately, there isn't actually one, except for just down here. But he'll get caught very easily by the mutas and the lings, and the medevacs do go down. It looks like uh, Solar's going to have a very nice and easy cleanup there. Yeah. Well played. At the last second, tried to focus fire down a muta, but it didn't really work out. And Kellos are absolutely yeah, blindsided by the mutas. Now Solar doesn't have enough to really force a counterattack, and that's good news. Kellos are. Uh, doesn't want to have to deal with lings on the ground and mutas in the air, but this is just a little bit late, does finish up and pushes that off, and Solar is going to just transfer over into Roaches beyond this. Yeah, he has plus one on the way and Glee Lord Constitution, Roach speed out there for the Roaches, and not going to worry about link production now, so Kelazor is just playing straight up bio, but unfortunately taking that early hit, losing that uh, double medevac stem push without getting much done, is going to set him behind here. And as long as Solar doesn't make too many big mistakes, he's going to be sitting pretty to be able to handle the uh, any follow-up Kelzor's happening. In fact, he's making 11 Roaches. This isn't defensive. He's going to be marching those across the map here with whatever mutas he has left and uh, probably going to try and end this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to time out with plus one as well as Roach speed, so it could be brutal. Uh, Kelzor, again, not much scouting. So you watch watching Jinbei. It's amazing. These mutas are actually doing a, a lot of damage to lame this yeah. production. It's very annoying for Kelzor to get back here. He accidentally SimCity'd himself <laughs> away, and he oh, just oh, actually oh. cancels every single barracks. Oh. oh, gosh. Now, he does have a drop going in the main here, but this is going to need need to be the most cost-efficient drop of all time for Kelzor to come back here. This Widowmine could potentially kill a lot of lings, or nothing. Yeah. Could also kill nothing. <laughs> yeah, right? Marines are still coming out, and luckily for Kelozer, Solar didn't build any more mutas, because if he did, I think this actually might be game over. You know, it comes to 12, then 16 mutas on top of your production, and you just can't get enough Marines. Finally, Liberator pops out to help just the tiniest little bit. Missile turrets are finally getting shots off, but Kelozer, despite having a third CC, uh, actually oh, isn't really able to get it, and is just no. so delayed in his production. I don't think we're going to see that third CC float out anytime soon, Zombie Grub. He is on the back foot. He's down 100 supply. A lot of that is in army. In fact, it is army that he's down by in 100 supply. Solar 126 over the 27 of Kelazor. He's got plus one. He's got roast speed. He's got ravages. And I do not see a way for the resilient Terran to fight back here. I think we're going to have ourselves a tied series very, very shortly here. Mm. There's really not many options left for the Terran. Two awkward games, one by Solar, one by Kelezer. I think neither of them <laughs> showing the real potential of what the series could be. And Kelezer's got to know that this is close oh, yeah. to being game. He's going to do his best. Liberators are good, but they're not that good. And I think that the Ravagers are going to be able to burn that down pretty quick. First bile, second bile, and third to finish it off. And uh, that is going to be game four, sure, here. Solar is powering through this Terran. It's going to make short work of him. Cool thing is, though, we're going to have ourselves a tired series. We're exactly. going to see who uh, who comes through on the last map. Uh, whoever loses, as uh, there's loser here, <laughs> it is tied up 1-1. Yep. Whoever loses the third game does have that bottom bracket, loser's bracket to mm -hmm. go down to. And hopefully they will stick around, as this is not going to be a very long tournament. I don't think there's much reason to be like, yeah, I'm never going to get through. You know, cause sometimes if there's like... <laughs> you know 40 other people okay then i'll give you something there but there's eight other people i think you should try <laughs> i think so yeah. it's good sportsmanship i think yeah. that too uh it's going to game number three it's going to be on proxima station i think is what it's called they just uh, another proxima. new one yeah one of the other new ones but before we get to that uh, we are going to go to a quick commercial break so thanks everyone for watching hope you're enjoying this tournament as well as gsls i'm sure you're all having that up on the second monitor and i'll see you guys in two minutes Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for watching those ads. We are getting into Proxima Station as the last game of this series. It's best of threes all the way to the finals, the winners, and the finals of the losers. And it is double elimination bracket. So whoever loses here is not quite out yet. And I am cheering for both of them, actually. Like, I like both of these guys, but I also like a little bit of the uh, other guys, of course. Zest, superhero, a lot of cool powerhouses, oh, yeah. in fact, here today. I didn't realize just how many we had. 
So that's good. Yeah, they need, good they chance need, of a Protoss getting through here. They need strength in numbers, I think, <laughs> at this point. Yeah, that's right. Time. It's uh, his last game, and in the top right on this map that I guess will... I actually played on this map, okay. We'll take a look at, at it after the introductions, <laughs> but in the top right, as the blue Zerg, it is Solar. And in the bottom left, currently still playing for OSC Root and being in the base trade TV house. This is Kelazor. Or Kelazur. Keller whatever. Keller. Really good player. Yeah. He's had he's uh, one of the guys that really pioneered a lot of uh, hashtag NA builds. Like there is um he, he helped me a lot with my TVP win rate, um, put it that way with some of the proxies, the creative proxies that he did. Creative proxies, yes. Yes, I... a proxy, a factory, and a starport, and then make a banshee out of that starport. <laughs> Hillstars really actually cool. have a lot of fun uh, fun builds, and certainly has been yeah. a fun guy to watch his development, because he did start off actually, like, not so great. I mean, we have that historic, amazing story about him getting Nexus Rush, which he hates, you know, us talking about by Huck, like, God, like three years ago at this point, probably. Uh, and then just continual growth through the Copa America Leagues, through the Ladder Heroes. Um, you know, Fear Dragon, obviously a big fan of this guy. And and he's been a fun player throughout. You know, a little bit cheesy, a little bit weird. But then his macro and his micro both got a lot better. And now he's almost taking games and a TVT off of the best screens in the world. So And sometimes he is, actually, in online tournaments. So he's doing pretty yeah. good. He did a really good job in the uh, the OSC tournament, the uh, finals that I cast end of December, or I want to say uh, before the new year. Um, no, actually it wasn't the new year, it was in January. So um, early January I saw a bit of Kelzor and he's always been around in that tournament circuit and also obviously on the base trade team, team circuit. He's done a really, really good job at showing his improvement. You could definitely see, like if you loaded up an old Kelzor replay and then showed, showed me his recent ones, you could see a very, very market improvement see a nice quick third here from Solar and Kelzor is doing his regular Reaper expand but it looks like he's going to switch things over into Hellions instead of going 2-1-1 this time um, and uh, you were going to say something about this map Zombie Grub talk to me about this map one yeah. of the brand new ones here we're going to go ahead and take a look at this map where the Reaper gets some decent scouting done not too much to scout yet but seeing uh, how many bases there are so uh, you do have a pocket expansion a nice little safe expansion there's rocks though so you got to consider that then you have your third down what it looks to be the main ramp and there's even rocks behind that as well so you know for lings getting back here it's actually quite annoying hasn't happened yet otherwise the mm. map distance is even longer than it looks because you do have to actually go down this ramp and up this one the rest are okay uh, blocked off so it's actually like unless you're traveling by air of course it's quite a long map and it's i don't know if i don't like it or like it at this point in time but i do like the fact that there's not a lot of reaper hop-ups so you're not gonna get yes rushed. yeah that so is pretty nice it actually like with the rocks i guess it's kind of it it to me feels like a little bit more of a slightly more sensible dasan station <laughs> slightly it's like sensible. with the yeah I was being kind to the Blizzard map, <laughs> to, well, not to the, I don't know if Blizzard actually made uh, Desan Station, but I was being kind to the map creators of, of the Desan Station by saying it's a little bit more sensible. It's uh, actually a lot more sensible. He, uh, actually, he's not in Blizzard, right? He was the, I remember because he was kind of famous for being one of the only Korean map makers. And yes, that's uh, right. he made Desan Station. Yeah, so it wasn't, I was being kind to him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have Hellions, and we have the high capacity fuel things again. Like, Ooh. I really do. I want to see what this looks like without Solar dying immediately, you know? Because that's what happened last time. He just kind of <laughs> yeah. executed the Hellbat build portion, and we didn't get to see the use of the Metavax. If you don't know what it is, um, it increases the Metavax fuel reserves, allowing Ignite Aftermath to last 50% last longer, which in turn means that the cooldown is a lot less as well. Like... A boost, it lasts longer, it accounts for the cooldown too, so it's really like, the boost is actually really amazing. And if we get to see it in action, I'll try and highlight it, because it's it's almost like instant after you uh, the boost goes off. But It's I just amazing to see resources put into it so early in the game. Yeah, it's just such an interesting tactical Ooh. build, like much as about the actual execution. Uh, Speaking of execution. In. Seeing Roasty Toasty going down here, three drone kills, couple of lings as well. Hasn't lost any Hellions yet, so that's a nice trade so far for Killazoo there. Like Putting the herd on with a Banshee transition. A little bit different from the first game on uh, on Crazy Map. 
crazy one math monograms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what does his name for a second? It's pretty important. I think he's missing he a scout the on the grounds. So. Seeing the armory is, uh, you know, he probably already senses it, feels it in his waters, so to speak, but he knows that the Hellbats are on the way here and he needs to deal with them. Uh, is starting Roach production around the same time as he did last game, but uh, with a little bit more, uh, with a little bit more rush distance, give him a little bit more uh, breathing room than on Honor Grounds to be able to get those numbers up. And he does bat away those Hellbats. Liberator denying some mining time here at the pocket natural. Yeah, not bad. So they already had a spore crawler and queens even in position, Oof. so barely doesn't Oof. lose it, but should here. Yeah, it's actually fine. And Hellions get right back in. The queens are distracted wow. and drones going down. Oh, they are indeed. He's actually getting quite a few drones this time. 16 workers killed in this game so far by Kelazor. Hey, look how long and, that lasts. Uh, Holy shit. Wow. Damn. That's. And look at I the mean, cooldown. It's like yeah, almost I, instantly I, you're back up. It's, it's ready already. In boost. It's. <laughs> this feels like a legit upgrade. It. Mm, I've never, I don't know. I've man. never seen it. I don't I know. Feel, I feel like maybe Kelzer and Scarlet were talking because this is just way too coincidental. So I was talking with her at Nation Wars, <laughs> of course, and she was like, um, I don't remember why, but she like kind of like was like, what about Ignite Afterburners? And I was like, okay, sure. Like, no one's going to get that upgrade. <laughs> and she was like, no, I think it's actually a pretty good upgrade, right? Like, it really reduces the cooldown. And I thought she was trolling me. But they've been like talking about it and strategizing the kicker. Because um, I, it, the, the weirdest thing is not just the upgrade, it's that it's always, so far, accompanied by Hellbat builds as opposed to a Barrett's build, right? Because he does go into Bio, but the opener to have both Hellbat Armory and Medivac Afterburners seems so weird. All it did was allow him to escape with Hellions, which doesn't seem that important because Hellions are only minerals. Because it's, it's uh, True. a odd little combo. It is interesting. But, you know, regardless, we are seeing it. This is the world that we live in. These Banshee's not getting too much done yet. Just killing some Creep Shimmers. Nine Creep is nice. But the Mutas are out now for Solar. Uh, did he research Cloak? No, he didn't. So, goodbye, Banshees. Yeah, they kind of did their job, though. I think one even got, like, six drone kills, I want to say. In total, Kelsey's oh, really? got 20. Yeah, I think it was one that died. She was just a... Uh, oh, okay. I just I clicked I clicked on one, and it had one kill. So yeah. I, I guess I clicked so. on the bad Banshee. <laughs> yeah. Um, it it might have gotten uh, less, though. I just know that it was, in the, it was in the third base for a lot longer than it should have been, because the queens were a little bit busy. Uh, there's not a lot of mutas, so the danger of losing the engineering bay is quite low. Stim isn't done. Now it is. A little too late, then you just fly off. It's the go away upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Reen's clearing up that main, and uh, the creep spread, even though it was denied a little bit by Solar, is looking very healthy right now. Plenty of active tumors starting to take the middle of the map here. The fourth base is up, it's a gold, and it's looking like it's going to be saturated. Solar is powering here, and he's looking real good. That's a lot of active creep tumors, actually. I just saw them in a production tab. Oh, God. Yeah, this is. It, it's, you know, very important to have this section and this section, because there are still R2 paths as this has been opened, and even Solar going ahead and taking this base is a... Uh, I, I don't know what's going to be the obvious base, to be honest. Like, it could be this one, because it's farther away from your opponent, which is usually better for Zerg, but the gold is still tempting, and it's still quite a distance away. So, like, it's not exactly, mm -hmm. like, expanding super towards your opponent. Uh, so it, this might be the more standard thing. Who knows? The yeah, Muse coming in again. Once again, there is a repair in Stim Marines to bat them away. No damage, well, I guess a little bit of damage done, getting some minerals cool. to spent on there and uh, to repair. But Kelzor trying to get some creep shimmers, gets a few there. But I mean, Solar's got so many, so many left where that came from, it doesn't actually matter too much. Yeah. Um, gets deflected. But Solar's already maxed, and it's just looking like it's going to be one of those Ling, Bling, Muta, uh, Tier 2 builds where you're just chill and lair for a while and overwhelmed with sheer numbers. Wow, those was really making the most out of this drop. It almost died originally to original set of, of uh, Bane Lings, but... Oh, the tanks aren't oh. Siege, but the Hellbats try and help out with the Lings. Oh my, this is getting crushed here. Got a reinforcement of, of, of Marines from Kelazor. That's not enough. Too much Zerg here. And Sola just reinforces with Lings. He's got 2-2 two -two on the way. Kelazor's 2-2 two -two is quite far ahead but he's uh, lost the majority of his army already, so... Yeah. Let's pull you back to these tanks. This tank line's pretty scary for the Zerg, but the Mutas are helping from the skies. 
pretty good, but the tank's getting quite a few blasts off and a lot of clumped roaches. The bailings are all gone, and if he had two more tanks, I think he's actually maybe cleaning this up, but he just does not have enough army, oh. and there are more banelings. Yeah, unfortunately, Sola, just the game of numbers at that point, just had too much. He's busted through, the tanks are all dead. Kelzor's army is in shambles, and he's forced to tap out. GG. Sola takes the 2-1 win. And really, it's a really well-played series by both players, but it kind of, a couple of those games really looked to me like they were just getting used to the new maps. Like, Honor Grounds yeah. was a little bit strange. Um, that map, again, Kelzor went for a sim similar opening, um, with the Ignite Afterburners and... And, uh... And going for that Hellbat drop there, and both maps kind of had, uh, I guess every game in the series was one-sided one way or the other. Uh, I get, map 3 came the closest to being a close game, but this came to a point where Solo just had the had the whole map, man. I was getting really worried for Kelazor already when I started to see how active the creep was, and the 4th being up, and Sola being maxed at a really early, at a really early time, so. Yeah. Very well played. I do wonder about the effectiveness of, of the effectiveness of the build he's doing, because while it looked to do a decent amount of damage, I mean, 20 drones isn't too bad. It was, you know, he was he made like 10 plus Hellions, which don't seem very useful after a while, even if he's running Hellbats. He made two Banshees that didn't get too much done for, you know, two of them. And more importantly, even if you got a lot of damage done with this, this delays everything else so much. You got your minerals in your Hellions instead of in your barracks, and you got your gas in your Banshees, and they got Afterburn as opposed to Stim. So, I, I don't know. It, it might work. It might just be more about the mid-game he played wrong. We'd have to actually, I think, ask him. But it was new. It's interesting, yeah. I'd like, yeah, I actually would love to talk to him about that. Um, I won't bother him right now. Um, but uh, I'd love to talk to him about that build later on, and... It, like you're absolutely right. You made a really good point about the Hellbats. They seemed completely useless in that final fight. Well, I guess it wasn't the final fight, but you know the the part where Sola took an incredible lead was when he crushed that army in the middle of the map, and the Hellbats did nothing. Man, the Roaches and the Ravages completely destroyed it. The Mutas did the rest. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know the tanks being on siege is obviously a pretty bad, pretty bad for the Terran as well. But ugh, it was a little bit sticky. It was, but that's. Uh... Yeah, as you said too, I think it was just about getting used to the maps because you only if you haven't played the maps, you have like five seconds when you're still micring your SCVs to be like, okay, what looks good on this map? Maybe originally you think yep. tanks, and then you relook and you're like, oh shit, no, actually these these might look like <laughs> chokes in the mini map, but they're really not when they actually get there. Um, yeah, so. and these maps are available like it early on the PTR, but not too many people play the PTR. So really, I mean, these maps going live pretty much, I, I think they're like very fresh through if, if the last maybe two three hours you've been able to ladder on these maps so yeah. they're very very fresh so we won't we won't see incredibly clean games on them if we do i'll be very very happily surprised <laughs> right. but um yeah oh uh, the uh, next match should be super versus solar we'll just follow him right into that so we have other matches going oh, yeah. on we uh have keen winning against tails so it's a tvp in the top um, Zest obviously still waiting for an opponent after getting walked over. And then a PvP in the bottom with Hero versus Creator. That would have been really fun to watch, I think, especially since Hero's been so cheesy lately, but I'm not going to catch it. So the plan is to cast this, uh, Solar versus Super, and then both semifinals, finals, obviously, and we'll see where the loser's bracket ends up after that. But thank you all for watching the uh, Korean Qualifiers number two, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as the lobby is ready.